What it really comes down to in Kiddoshim is that being holy is about the small little things you do every day and how you do them. If you do them honestly, if you do them ethically, if you do them with respect. That's going back to the Torah, what holiness is about. So it says at the very end of the Torah portion of Kiddoshim, which you're not reading tomorrow, um, the very end of the portion it says, the land of Israel will not sustain on it those who act unethically or immorally. The just and honest treatment of all those who live on it is required for you, the Jewish community, to remain there. So this is not a political rundown of Israel. That's not my area of expertise anyway. And, you know, you're all at least have some familiarity um, with the fact that things have been pretty difficult in Israel, um, absolutely since the last election. Um, and it's, you know, some would say, although I know the word crisis is thrown around all the time, so some might say, they might be right, maybe not, that this is really an unprecedented crisis in Israel. I'm not sure that's true, but certainly it's, it's scary. It's scary right now. Um, the crisis is about Israel's future as a democratic state. Um, it, and really, you know, what it's about is issues of the separation of powers and how judges are appointed and religion and state. But really on a much deeper level than that, it's about really very profound differences in Israel with how people see what does it mean to be in a Jewish state? What does it even mean to be Jewish, to live a Jewish life? I mean, those are kind of some of the deep meanings. It's about the future of um, the West Bank, about how Jewish law is observed. I don't like that phrase, but observance of Jewish law. How are non-Jews treated? Are there human and civil rights fully for every person who's there? How are Jewish women treated? How are LGBT Jews treated? Reform Jews? How is everyone and is everyone able to access Judaism in the land of Israel? So these are things that are being discussed a great deal in Israel and by Jews in the United States. Um, the Israel Religious Action Center is connected to the reform movement. It's like we have a religious action center here, they have one in Israel, and this is a, um, a short statement from, from that, from the Israeli Religious Action Center. Members of the new government threaten to override Israel's core values with racism, extremism, and discrimination. A barrage of coalition agreements form a powerful storm that endangers the Religious Action Center's legal achievements that secured Israel as a Jewish and democratic homeland. A legal revolution, if it is allowed to pass, will block attempts to challenge in court extreme initiatives of the government. It will harm Israel's democracy. It will leave the rights of reformed Jews, of women, of LGBTQ and Arabs unprotected. So that is sort of a summary statement from the Israel Religious Action Center. You, I'm sure, have all either on social media or somewhere have seen pictures of like giant marches happening somewhere in Israel, just like huge numbers of people at some point, and they're all the time. I know that my, my daughter's boyfriend of many years is Israeli, and he has participated in many marches, sometimes many times in a single week. I mean, they're just going all the time. Um, so we Americans are also facing a lot of maybe similar threats to basic human rights in this country. I don't have to list them for you. We live in Florida, you know what they are. Um, and, you know, perhaps we wonder, 
what responsibility do we have to try to protect the rights of those so far away in Israel? Isn't it all I can do to keep up? Like, I can't barely keep up with the Sun Sentinel. Like, what's happening in Broward, in Florida, in our country? Like, you know, why do I also need to worry about what's going on halfway around the world in Israel? And I can't answer that question for you because everyone, you know, has a different perspective on that. Why, as Jews who live in the United States, should we care about what's going on over there? But I do encourage you to think about it because I think it's important at least to think about should you care about what happens in Israel? What does it mean to you? Why? To talk about it. I think it's an important conversation. Um, we're going to conclude this service with the singing of the national anthem of Israel, which is called Hatikva, the hope. The hope of Jews for hundreds and hundreds of years that someday we would have a place to be free, to be ourselves, free to observe and follow Jewish practices and holidays and values. Well, the hope now is real for 75 years. So maybe what's our hope now? Now that, so Israel is a real country. What's our hope now as Americans in 2023? First of all, we hope we never have a need to flee to Israel because one of the uh, one of the things that Israel represents is a safe haven where we can go if we're being horribly persecuted in our own country. So we certainly hope that is not a need for us in the United States. We never know, but we certainly hope. Um, we hope that we can feel pride in how Israel treats those most vulnerable and those who are not among the right-wing Orthodox. Can we feel pride in the way Israel is a place for all Jews to be Jewish? We hope that we can always look to Israel, visit Israel, spend time in Israel, and have it be a place of our people's history, which it clearly is, and a place where Judaism is lived in all its beauty and in its lofty, godly values. If you are moved to help bring the hope of a stronger, more democratic, more caring, more open and inclusive Israel, um, if, you have, if you are moved to, to do what you can to move that vision closer to reality, I encourage you to write letters. I mean, American Jews still have some power because our country gives money to Israel. Um, to donate to Israeli organizations that are doing the, the work to make Israel a place that you would like to see it be. So there are two Israel organizations associated with the reform movement. One art is called Artsa, one is called um, as I said earlier, Israeli Religious Action Center. So those are two possibilities. There are other wonderful programs in Israel. There's peace programs that work to get um, Jewish and Arab teens together to bridge, make bridges of understanding and friendship. Um, if you're an environment person, the Society for Preservation of Nature in Israel is a wonderful organization that helps the environment, all kinds of environmental concerns in Israel. Um, there's, there's a lot to do. There's places if, whether you support or vehemently do not support what is going on in Israel right now, there are many places you can give money to, to support. Know that there are many, many Israeli citizens who do not approve of what is happening in the political world right now, and you can support their efforts. As we read in our Torah portion this week, Kiddoshim, holiness is not an abstract idea, angels floating around in the sky, or even standing on the bima in front of the Torah scrolls, even though that's a very nice thing to do. True holiness is the small things that we do each day to make our Jewish world better, 
to make our entire world better.